In the last two videos, we're just going to touch on a couple of very, very minor topics that really don't appear that much. And the first is what I called miscellaneous formulas, for lack of a better description. And it's two formulas that aren't in the reference table, and they are covered in the blue book, the official study guide. They do mention them, so to me that says that it's within their rights to talk, to use them, or to ask about them on a test, so that's why I should cover them. But to be honest, you're really... I'd be surprised if you saw any of these... Uh, used on the test. At the very least, they might be useful shortcuts for certain problems, but even that, I don't think you necessarily need them. But let's go over them anyway. Anyway, the first one is the midpoint formula. And this, again, has to do with co coordinate geometry. So let's say we had our axes, and let's say we had two points, negative 3, negative 2, and 1, 5. And I wanted to know, what is the, if we drew a segment here, what is the midpoint? What is this point right here between the two? To find that, you just do the following. The midpoint, x, y, is just going to be x1 plus x2 over 2, comma, y1 plus y2 over 2. You're pretty much just taking the average of these two points. So in our example here, it would just be 1 plus minus 3 divided by 2, uh, and 5 plus minus 2 over 2. This is the same thing as negative 1, uh, 3 halves. Right? Yes. Uh, and that would be about you know this point right here, which is exactly what we wanted. So that's the midpoint formula. Again, I don't really think you're going to use it that much, but do be aware that they might cover it, so know it. The other formula is the distance formula. And this is one where I don't think I've ever seen a problem where you need the distance formula. You might need it. You might be able to use it on maybe the occasional problem just because it's a quick shortcut. But in general, you don't need to use it. So let's again. Actually, let's look at the same points we had over here. What was it? Uh, negative 3, 2. Negative 3, 2. And 1, 5. So let's say this time I wanted to know, what is if I drew a segment here, what is the distance? The distance between these two points. Well, if you think about it for a minute, we could complete a right triangle here as such, right? A triangle with sides, well, it's going to be from negative 3 to 1, so this would be a length 4, right? From negative 3 all the way over to positive 1, which is 4, and then from negative 2 up to 5, so 7. So I've got a right triangle here with lengths, with legs of 4 and 7, and now I just use a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And this is why generally you don't need the distance formula, you can just do the Pythagorean theorem. But what is a distance formula? The shortcut or the or the shortcut, but the distance formula method is to say, okay, x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, all under this radical. So in this case, we're going to get d equals x2 minus x1, so 1 minus minus 3 squared plus 5 minus minus 2 squared. This is just going to be... Uh, 4 squared plus 7 squared, square rooted. By the way, if we did the, the uh, Pythagorean theorem, what would we get? Well, we'd have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That's just 4 squared plus 7 squared equals c squared. Let me just actually write the c squared over here. I'm going to square root both sides to get rid of the c. So I'm going to have c equals the square root of 4 squared plus 7 squared. What do you know? They're the same, right? This is just this is formula. It's just a quick shortcut to get to this step right here. So in this case, we'd have the square root of 6, this is going to turn out ugly, 16 plus 49, d is the square root of 65, and I think that's as far as you can take it. So the answer would be square root of 65 for this one. So those are your two formulas you might need to know. Learn them, and uh, if they do come up, you'll be ready to go on test day.